stayed at the other one. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Ed from Zen Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So in today's video, I am with Mark from Shark Designs. Mark, how are you doing? Okay. Excellent stuff. Now, Mark, if you've seen the previous video, uh, Beginner's Guide to Fit and Steel, if you haven't watched it, man. Why haven't you watched it, man? So I spent time with Shark at the, uh, with, sorry, uh, Mark from Shark Designs at the uh, Bushcraft Show 2014. And uh, he very kindly took some time out. We went through um, the kind of whole do's and don'ts of a traditional flint and still. And it was a very well received video. Now I'm back at the Wilderness Gathering 2014 where we meet the lovely Mark again and his, uh, his wife Helen. And uh, we're at the Shark Designs store. And what I want to do today is go through the fire piston. It's something that I've not actually used myself. I know a lot of guys are talking about it now on, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook. So I thought let's just take a little bit of time out. Mark has very kindly donated some time to kind of go through what it is, what's the fire piston, and some do's and don'ts. So let me jump behind the camera and uh, we'll get started. Okay, Mark, so do you want to just first explain what is a fire piston? Well, fire piston works on. Boyle's law, okay, and it's been known about for probably centuries in the Indonesian islands because what it works on is compression of air, and when you compress air rapidly, it gets hotter. So that was that was on Boyle's law, and uh, a famous chap called uh, Mr. Diesel discovered that uh, uh, the f first principles of the diesel engine, which are very popular these days. So this is effectively a very small diesel engine. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how it works. This is a, a fire piston, a demonstration fire piston. And what we got is the tube here, and obviously it contains that much air, and then the piston itself, which has got a rubber seal around it. And the rubber seal is well lubricated. Okay. Now in the end of the, uh, usually in some, I'll show you a bit later on on some of the other ones, but usually there's a little hole in there to put your tinder in. But in this particular case, we have a separate tinder cup holder, which is just here. And this is kapok, which is like cotton wool. It, it just sort of demonstrates the process of, of the, how the fire piston works. So if we put the piston in, uh, the tube, put the tube over and then we've got to look down here and when I compress the air rapidly it will cause the, uh, the, the temperature to rise to a sufficient point that the tinder in there will spontaneously combust. Okay so here we go. That's a very fast reaction because of the nature of the actual tinder that was actually used in there. And you see it's all burnt away. If we use a uh, um, if we put diesel in there, okay, that would be a diesel engine. Uh, what we're going to do is use another kind of piston, uh, fire piston. Okay, so you said you're going to use another fire piston. Yep. Uh, this is a nice little fire piston. It's really cheap and it's good quality. And as you can see here at the end, you've got the tinder cup and that will hold the tinder and on the side we've got the uh, gasket or the grommet to create an airtight seal okay so what we do is just take that out and we'll recharge it with some fresh tinder so we we'll know it's going to work so this is char cloth which you'll see me using in the other video you take it, is this the only thing that you can use? Or no, you can use loads and loads of stiff, different stuff. We, like you can use that, the Amadou, which we've, we've seen before. Um, like the Amadou. That's a natural plant dam. And if you have a look over here, you'll see that Amadou is this big bracket fungus here. So, so it's a natural bracket that grows on, on trees. And obviously they've made clothes out of it and hats here. So um, Amadou is a really good, good uh, way of using a fire piston as well. We use a bit of char cloth. So you need a little teeny piece, and it's a bit fiddly with big podgy fingers like mine. But what you want to do, this is why I use a little dibby stick here. 
and just sort of loosely pack it in the tinder cup holder now whilst five pistons are um, a really kind of ingenious way of creating fire they are a bit temperamental and sometimes they work sometimes they don't so that's nicely loosely packed there's a little bit sticking up at the top above the tinder cup uh, the gasket we could add a little bit of more lubrication to it just to so you don't need a lot and where are you actually applying it to the so what? Where are you applying it? The, the, using the, um, petroleum jelly on, on the gasket itself. Right, gotcha. Okay. So that lubricates the piston up and down the action. It also helps create an airtight seal. So put the piston in to the, the chamber and then what we need to do is bang it home and then pull it out quickly okay so what I like to do is rest the piston on that finger okay. and grip it hard now if I use a little finger there wouldn't be as much because it will bend away so I use gotcha. two fingers okay and then bang it down and take it out as you can see we've got an instant ember there okay and as we've demonstrated in other ones this ember can be um, eased out, put with some more char cloth. Uh, you see it's smoking away there. So we can add more char cloth to it to um, extend its life. And then that can be put into a tinder bundle and blown to life. Or alternatively, we can use, say, a sulphur match and then just touch the sulphur match to it. Oh, it's a bit windy, but when the sulphur match catches, you can see it's smoking away there. And oh, it has caught a flame, but it's just blown itself oh, it's, oh, it's just blown itself out. So if it wasn't so windy and the camera wasn't here, I would be cupping it gotcha. with my hand and it would create a flame and then you just light your candle. Or you put this whole thing in, in your tinder bundle and blow it into a flame that way. I mean, we've seen it a hundred times, so uh, anyway, that, that's uh, that one. Okay, so that was right. that one then. This, this piston is, is, is also quite good because you've got a little cup at the end that just unscrews and you keep your tinder in there. Gotcha and at the other end you have another cup where you can keep your Vaseline nice. okay and just as an added bonus for this one because like I said it they are a bit temperamental you do have a secret chamber in here that has Ferrocerium rod. Oh wow, okay. That's okay, cool. so that's an emergency. Right, well, so that's that kind of piston. Like I said, very cheap, really good quality. Um, very impressed with it. And then we've got the second kind of piston. This is um, a really beautiful piston uh, made of a cabola wood. And again, let's go to the fire cut there. It is a rubber grommet one and this is called a second generation because one of the things with fire pistons is when you close it, it won't close because you're compressing the air. So keeping it safe without it just falling out is a little bit of a problem. So what the guy did was he invented a little valve just here that allows you to squeeze that in. It squeezes all the air out, close the valve and now it's Oh, wow. Sucking itself into gotcha. place, right. so you're not going to lose your piston. So that's um, a little bit on the fire piston, a little bit of a pros and cons. If you want, we can look at some reason why they do and don't work. So now some pros and cons with the right, yeah. A pros and cons with it. The 
pros are it's really it's a unique way of making fire it is good fun but you should never really rely on it in the woods or in a survival situation on its own you really should carry something else because it is a very temperamental um, piece of apparatus a lot of people will find that the They'll bang away, they'll pull it out too slowly. Now, if you imagine you've compressed it, you've burnt all the air up in there, in the explosion that happens. Mm -hmm. so there's no air in there, it's just full of smoke. And if you're too slow in pulling it out, the ember will go out. Gotcha. So as, as soon as it's been banged home, it comes out straight away. Okay, so it comes out immediately, if not sooner. All right. Uh, the second thing that happens is if your tinder has been, you've popped it a few times and just put it out with your finger, it will burn out and then it, it, it won't get the heat into where it's needed. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is in, in uh, testing, kind of fault finding, once you've compressed and pulled it out and it's not a light, if you look in the tube, you should see it full of smoke. Okay. If it's full of smoke, it means it, it is combusting, okay? So you, 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 you are there, but you're probably not pulling it out quickly enough or the tin, there's something wrong with the tinder, but there's nothing wrong with the fire piston itself. If there's no smoke in the tube, it probably means that the gasket isn't creating a full seal, mm -hmm. okay? So you have to make sure that there is a press back, because you can see already that's lost its compression, okay? So it needs to be slightly tightened and the compression's come back. Gotcha. Okay? So it's critical, critical. Okay. So the, the next thing that we want to look at, once you've banged a piston home and pulled it out, you've spent the air that's inside it. So people say, oh right, it doesn't work, they'll put it straight back in there and they'll try it again and it won't, but you've got spent air. So what you have to do is either tip it upside down and shake it, because the smoke is heavier than air, so it'll fall mm -hmm. out, or just blow on it, like go, okay. But if you give yourself a song. You yeah. can whistle a song, but if you just blow in it, like that, you get fresh air in, but gotcha. be careful you don't spit in there because right. you don't want moisture. And again then test your, test your tinder, put it back in, bang it home, pull it out as quickly as you can. So if you've got smoke, it's working, but there might be something wrong with your tinder. Okay? So there are a few of the fault, faults that you can be looking for with it. Okay, so Mark, so you're going through the pros and cons and the kind of breakdown uh, and the, the beginner's guide. Uh, where are these available, these fire pistols? Uh, well, we have them for sale um, on Sharp Tinderbox, uh, .co uk or beaverbushcraft.co.uk. Excellent. Um, if they're not on there, uh, we will get them in stock because it's something we like to keep in stock. Uh, and what I'll do is, uh, for those of you watching this video, I'm going to put a link uh, to uh, Shark Designs and Shark Tinderbox uh, just below this video. Feel free to check them out. Um, and they have a load, a load of amazing stuff on there. You know, um, and this just goes on. So make sure you're stocked up on your wallet <laughs> when, when you're going by, because they really do have some great stuff. So this is available on your site. Is it just the one model that you have? This, at the moment, we've got uh, this in silver and okay. we've got it in green. Right. Okay. Um, we do do spurs for them, so we do. You do when you get the spurs, you get them in little packs of five mm -hmm. for the the little grommets. Okay. But what what we've introduced is instead of using the little rubber grommets that come supplied with it, we we put on um, or we can supply proper leather grommets. The leather grommets will just last that much longer. Gotcha. Um, but you you have to you have to make them fit. So whilst they do fit, um, that's a leather grommet, <coughs> and replacing the grommets is a relatively easy process. You just unscrew the tinder cup, remove the old grommet because it might be worn, you know, beyond repair. Uh, re screw on 
the new grommet, okay, and then wet it because it it has to be wet molded to the piston. So this is actually um, a leather grommet on there, mm -hmm. and then when it's screwed on, it's forced in, and and it molds itself to the shape, and then you can oil it. Okay. Gotcha. But there is actually a little technique is if you don't have any oil or, or grease or any lubricant you can actually with a, a leather one you can actually use water or spit right because it will swell the fibers and it does work because I've tried it and you will get compression mm -hmm. but it's not ideal because it's not lubricated as it goes up and down gotcha so with this one here, so that's available on your site. Yeah. Um, so guys, uh, I think you can all, you know, join me in thanking you once again, Mark, for taking the time out uh, to show anybody. Because I know a few people have asked me, and I've been curious as to how this works. I've never used it myself. Um, so once again, I do thank you for your time, uh, guys. If you want to go check out uh, uh, the Shark Design site, I'll have the link below, and also the fan page. Uh, and also, Mark, is it okay if people have questions, they can contact you via the fan page. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can email me, at Mark at shark designs with an s one word dot uh, co dot uk excellent stuff i'll put that email just below as well thanks. so people have any questions about anything that you're doing and what yeah. you just demonstrated today so thanks once again mark and guys thank you for watching and have a blessed day take thank care you,